Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. In this quick tutorial, we're going to be getting started using Mantra VR. Mantra VR is a comprehensive set of stylization effects designed to take your cinematic 360 VR production to the next level. The effects are built to work on spherical footage in After Effects and Premiere Pro, and they were created by the same developers at Metal who created the Skybox 360 VR plugins. Let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and take a look at Mantra VR. Alright guys, inside of After Effects, a quick way we can pull up the entire Mantra effects list is just come to the Effects and Presets panel here. And I'm just going to type in Mantra. And there we can see a quick list of all the various effects that are included, so you can see there's quite a few. However, one other thing that's included with Mantra VR that's pretty revolutionary, especially for anybody working with 360 footage, is the new Globe Preview feature. So we're just going to come up here to Window, and you're going to see Extensions, then you're going to see Metal Globe Preview. I'm going to go ahead and select that. That's going to launch the Metal Globe Preview, and all I need to do is just select on my current composition. And that'll go ahead and update and show a Globe Preview of the 360 equirectangular image I have open in my composition. You can then go ahead and select and click around on the globe, and you can see it from various 360 perspectives. And you can zoom in and out with the wheel on your mouse, and you can click around and drag. And if you want to see different faces, you'll see a cube map unfold up here, and you can select the front, and it'll automatically toggle the front view. You can go to the right or the left. What's also really neat about this, we can just double click on the sphere. And we're going to go inside now for a POV view of the sphere. So it's a nice little quick preview we can see of what's happening on our footage. And if we want to just double click, we can zoom back out. And you can also toggle on and off the kind of degree, longitude, and latitude lines. So you can see the various poles on your footage and where the horizon line is. So that's a nice option to have to double check on your footage that everything is level. What's also great is we can go ahead and dock this now. I'm just going to dock this over here in After Effects. And so we can leave this open here and have a constant preview of our footage to kind of see what it's going to look like in 360. All right, so let's get started applying a few effects to our footage. So I've got this Mont Blanc footage here. I'm going to select the Mantra Chrome Spheres effect. I'm just going to apply that on my footage. This is a nice effect to start out with to kind of see some of the features that are included with quite a few of the Mantra effects. So right off the bat, we have a Chrome Sphere here in the middle of our footage. Let's just come over here to the effects panel and kind of go through this list of options. So right off the bat, we have the frame layout. We can select between monoscopic or stereoscopic footage. In my case, it's monoscopic. Next, we have the point of interest where we can select and click around on our footage to move that chrome sphere around. You can see as I move it above here, the reflections are constantly updating. And I can really move it anywhere I want to on the footage. And it's nice to be able to click and drag it around. And it's updating pretty quickly. Next, we have the field of view. So it's kind of like the size of the sphere. So I can just toggle this and you can kind of see, get an idea for what's happening. We have a few other options such as the feather of the sphere, so you can see that I increase this, it gets softer around the edges, and I can bring it all the way down to zero, and you can see we get a hard edge on the chrome sphere. We can also turn on and off the background with the draw background feature, so if we want to apply something separate to this footage, we could use that. Other options include the opacity of the sphere, but what really makes the mantra effects powerful is this distribution options we have down here, and a lot of the effects have this distribution option, so I'm just going to toggle this down. And you'll see various other settings we can apply to this chrome sphere. The first is the distribution type, which on most of the effects, the default is Fibonacci. And this allows you to add in various numbers of instances here. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase this, and you can see what's going to happen. We get more chrome spheres added to our scene, and they're just added in this Fibonacci sequence, which is just a mathematical sequence. But if I zoom in here, we can see quite a bit's happening on our footage now. We have multiple spheres, but you can also see they're all being reflected in each other, which looks really cool. We also have an option up here on the Chrome Spheres effect, which is the recursion level. So I, it's currently set to one. If I increase this to two, you'll see we get even more reflections occurring on the Chrome Spheres. So we have the regular reflection, and then in that reflection, you can see even more reflections. So it's very much like an Inception-like effect, but if you don't want that, you can actually bring the recursion level on this down to zero. And you can see they all disappear. And so you can set that to whatever value you want. I like the default set at one there. I'm going to go ahead and increase the number of instances here just so we can see this a little bit more. Some of the other powerful effects part of the distribution is the latitude. So I can go ahead and toggle this. and It'll actually move all the spheres to one side or the other based off where the point of interest is. So you can see they're all collected around the point of interest. I'll go ahead and move this around. And I can adjust the latitude. If I adjust it all the way to the negative, they go to the exact opposite pole of the footage where the point of interest is. You can see it's on the exact opposite angle. So I'll go ahead and set this back to zero at the default. We also have the rotate around the point of interest option. So if I move this, you can see how all the spheres are rotating around this point of interest. Incremental scale works in a similar method. You can see I can go ahead and adjust this, and it's going to adjust the scale depending on where the point of interest is. 
Then we have a few other options like random scale deviation, which is just gonna randomly adjust the scale, and random position deviation, which will randomize the position of the spheres. And of course, we have random seed at the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable the chrome spheres effect. Let's check out one of the other effects we have in Mantra VR. So I'm gonna bring over the Escher Droste effect. I'm gonna drop that on my footage. And now we get this unique looking twirl happening on our footage. It's kind of like an infinite loop and it is seamless. So it's pretty unique. And one of the cool features of this effect I really like is the zoom loop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toggle this and you can see how it's like an infinite zoom on our 360 footage. And you can keyframe, add expressions to this, anything you want to. You can also adjust the feather of the edge there. So you can really blend some shots together and create some nice abstract looks using this effect. One setting that I really like that a lot of the mantra effects have is the interpolate option here. So I'm actually gonna bring the feather back down to zero. So you can see we have this hard edge, but with this interpolate option, it's currently set to 100. If I drag this down to zero, you're gonna see what's gonna to happen to the footage. It's actually gonna go right back to the default, how the footage looked originally. So that's a really nice option to have, especially when you create like these cool transitional effects on your footage. But what's also great about all the mantra effects is they are all stackable. So you can stack them, apply them together in various ways and get a lot of different results. So you can see, go ahead and turn back on the chrome spheres effect that we had applied. And you can see that our Escher Droste effect is actually being applied on top of those chrome spheres. And it'll actually interpolate between those two. So now we're back to that effect. But if I wanted to, I could also move the chrome spheres down below the Escher Droste effect for a totally different result. And now you can see the Escher Droste is actually being reflected in the reflections on the chrome spheres. So by combining all these mantra effects together, you can definitely get some unique one-of-a-kind results. However, combining effects was always kind of part of the idea of Mantra VR. So let's go ahead and go to another composition here. And I want to show you one of the other main center points that's part of Mantra VR, and that's actually the Mantra VR effect and the node-based UI panel. So I'm gonna come up here and select Mantra VR from the effects panel and just apply it to my footage. And if we go over to the effects panel, you're gonna see it says Mantra VR, and we have toggle panel, and we can select between monoscopic or stereoscopic footage. And we also have a few other options like master and audio reactivity we'll take a look at here in just a second. So first I wanna go ahead and toggle the panel. And when I click that, it opens up the Mantra VR panel, which is where we can add in node-based effects from the actual Mantra effects. So let me just go ahead and kind of demo this for you so you can get a visual. So we have all these controls that we can actually add in here. And we have the various effects that are the same effects we have over here in our effects panel. We also have access to quite a few presets. So if I just come over here, you can see all the various presets that are currently included with Mantra VR. I'm gonna go ahead and select one of these just so we can take a look at this. I'm gonna select the waves effect. So when I click that, we'll see quite a bit has happened here. If I go ahead and move this out of the way and I scroll through the footage, we have this waves preset effect that's been applied to our 360 footage and it's already animated with expressions. So it's really quick and easy to apply that to our footage. But we can see quite a bit has happened here. We have all these various effects applied in the effects panel. And we can see there's quite a few different expressions that are linked up over here that would take quite a bit of time to actually recreate all of this just using the effects panel. So if we come over to the UI panel, we can see what we've got here. So we have three different instances of the Meridian Waves effect applied here, and we have a circular waves effect. But we have them all linked through various expressions to the amplitude and the phase. And what's nice is we only had to apply one amplitude effect and one phase effect to link all these together. I know this may sound a little bit complicated and overwhelming, so I'm gonna just go ahead and create a very simplified version of this so you can get a little bit better understanding. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the trash can here, delete that preset. So I'm gonna come in here and apply one of the effects. I'll apply the circular waves effect. Then I'm also gonna apply the twirl effect. So now you see we have the circular waves and the twirl effect here. So I'll just move these over here. And actually where they are in the stack order over here in the node stack, you can see they're actually gonna update over here in the effects panel. So I just go ahead and move circular waves below twirl you're gonna see it's automatically gonna update over here in the effects panel. So there's no need to actually move and adjust things over here in the effects panel if you don't want to. And if you're more comfortable working with a node-based system, you can use this setup. So I'm gonna come over here to the controls and I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a slider controller. And what I can do is I can actually link this slider controller to both of these effects at the same time. And this is much faster than having to apply an expression to each one of these over here in the effects panel. So I'm just gonna select the slider controller and I'm gonna connect it to circular waves and you can see the options that are highlighted in white are all everything I can link this up to. So I'm gonna select the amplitude, and I'm gonna go back to the slider controller, and I'm gonna link it also to the twirl for the strength. So right now with everything currently set at zero, you can see the 360 footage, nothing's really happening. But if I go ahead and animate the slider controller upward, you can see it's applying the circular waves and the twirl effect at the same time. So you can see how you would use the Mantra VR panel to create very comprehensive and complicated VR effects.
So I'm going to go ahead and delete that that I created just there. And I'm going to close the Mantra VR panel. Now, as I mentioned before, we have the audio reactivity here. So I'm just going to toggle this down and briefly show you this. So I have some music here in my composition as well. So you can actually have your effects react to music using the Mantra VR effect. So I'm going to select my audio layer here. In my case, it's just going to be my music track. And I can select what I want it to affect on the master. So I'm just going to select the low mid range. And I'm going to come over here and apply one of my effects. I'm going to select the circular waves effect and apply it to my footage. And just because this is underneath the Mantra VR effect, it's not going to be affected by the audio. So I'm just going to make a few quick tweaks on the wavelength here. I'm going to increase that up just a little bit so we can visualize this a little easier. And now, just like that, I'm going to go ahead and RAM preview this, and you're going to see how this reacts to the music. So it's that quick and easy to have your effects react to audio using the Mantra VR effect. Now let's quickly take a look at a few of my favorite effects that are included with Mantra VR. And the first one is the turbulence effect. So I'm just going to drag that onto my footage. And if I go ahead and adjust the progress here, you're going to see this liquid-like turbulence being applied to the 360 footage. And again, this is seamless. So now I can come over here to the global preview and just kind of look around on that. You can see how abstract it actually looks. I'll just zoom in here so you can see some fine details. It almost looks kind of like water turbulence being applied to the 360, like a liquid ink effect. And we continue to adjust the progress to increase the amount of turbulence that's occurring on the footage. And you can see how all the colors are mixing together. We can also adjust the force direction. So it'll actually determine kind of the gravity of where everything's flowing to. I'll go ahead and bring this back down so we can see it a little bit better as I adjust the force direction here. And we can also adjust the veracity. I can check this on and off. And you can see how it kind of smooths things out with it being off. Reminds me quite a bit of a Van Gogh painting, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the VR player so we can kind of preview what this looks like in 360. So you can see it's really unique, the results you get from this. And again, you can keyframe the amount of progress and everything happening on the footage. So now let's take a look at another one of my favorite effects, and that is the magnifying glass effect. So I'm just going to apply that to this footage. And what's really cool about the magnifying glass effect is that it's going to create this kind of circle cutout where you can zoom in on various things in your footage to reveal things. So you can see how useful this will probably be with 360 works. So I can actually adjust the magnification level. Set this on full resolution so we can see this. But it's a really quick and easy way you can show fine details in a 360 video to the viewer, uh, particularly in like a documentary style video. And you can adjust things like the feather and the opacity of this, essentially allowing you to zoom in on something with a 360 video, which is often quite difficult because it's such a wide angle that you're viewing everything from. So again, this is a nice way to show fine details. All right, so continuing to move through the effects, let's take a look at some of the more unique effects that are included with Mantra VR. And the first one would have to definitely be the hyperbolics effects. So I'm just going to apply this to my 360 footage. And you're going to see we get this really trippy kaleidoscope-like effect on our 360 footage. You can actually have a few different settings here that actually are kaleidoscope. And I'm just going to select one of those. And I'm going to come in here and just tweak around with these settings. And you're going to see all the different results you can get. Again, this is seamless. So you can get some really trippy looking results. I'm going to bring back up the VR player so we can kind of look at this in 360. Everything is seamless and blends together. And again, we have the option to interpolate between this view and the original footage. So I'll go ahead and keyframe this back down. You can see how it's going to morph everything back into the original and then back into the kaleidoscope-like effect. The next effect that's really unique is the Mantra VR graphics effect. So I'm just going to apply this to some footage. And what the Mantra VR graphics effect does, it's very similar to the Project 2D effect, except it allows you to apply those customized distribution options to your logos or whatever imagery you're adding into your 360 video. So let's go ahead and demo this real quick. What I've got here is the Mantra VR logo. And let's turn that on so you can see it. If I select my main footage where I apply the graphics effect, it's going to allow me to select that layer. So any layer that I've got in here with my composition. So I'm just going to select the Mantra VR logo. And when I do that, we're going to see another version of the logo has been applied to our footage. So I can go ahead and turn off the original logo. And we can see the Mantra VR logo has been applied correctly for 360. I can adjust the field of view. What's also really nice is I can just adjust it by clicking around the position and positioning it anywhere in the 360 shot that I want to. I know a lot of people requested this feature where you can just drag and drop it wherever you want it to be in the scene. Well, now you can using the graphics effect. But as I mentioned, what's also great about this is we have these distribution options down here. So I can go ahead and increase the number of instances of that logo. And I can create some really cool, unique animations with this. And they're all facing correctly and they're all seamless to the footage. I really like adjusting the latitude here. You can see how they're all going to converse right into the logo and then you can animate them kind of exploding from it and just really going all over the scene 
And so this is a really nice way you can create some cool abstract looks with your own logos, with your own video clips, or any other imagery you want to add into a 360 shot. All right, so I've jumped back to the Mont Blanc 360 footage to demo this final effect that I want to show you in the getting started video. And that is the Mantra VR primitives effect, which is also very unique. So I'm just going to select that and apply it to the footage. And right off the bat, we see we have a sphere in here, which is kind of similar to the Chrome Spheres effect. We just have quite a few bit more options here. So we can come here to the primitives effect and select any object you want of the presets here. So I'm going to select a cube just to kind of demo this a little bit easier. You can see it actually is a 3D cube that I can go ahead and kind of toggle around here in space. And we can even adjust the scale of the cube so you can change the sizes of that and really just create your own unique custom shapes. But you can come in here and you can tweak the materials and the colors so I can actually adjust the reflectivity of the cube. You can see it's actually going to reflect the 360 scene here as I go ahead and adjust it rotating. So it's actually like it exists in this 360 space. And I can dial the reflectivity back down or adjust the ambient lighting. Really any of these options that I want to. And I can even add in my own custom texture. I'm going to go ahead and change the color here. But again, we have access to those distribution options down here. So I can go ahead and open this back up and increase the number of instances of that cube. And just zoom out here so we can create some really custom looks using this. So you can see how useful this would be for something like music videos or anything like that. You're wanting to add some abstract shapes, animating in 360. And of course, we can always apply other mantra effects on top of the primitives effect, such as turbulence here. I'll go ahead and apply that. And I'll go ahead and increase the progress here for some even more customized results. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this getting started tutorial using Mantra VR. If you want to know even more about Mantra, make sure you check out the full overview tutorial where I dive through each of the effects. And Metal will even be releasing tutorials diving into individual effects. So there's going to be lots of Mantra VR content coming out for you to check out. All right, guys, it's been Charles Jager from Metal. Thanks for watching.